it was the clash of Britain's architectural titans. Sir John Soane and James Wyatt, two of the greatest architects in British history, went head to head for the chance to remodel one of Britain's most important buildings. They offered two radically different visions for the Palace of Westminster. One inspired by the glories of Imperial Rome, the other firmly rooted in Britain's medieval traditions. Which one would the politicians choose? The Palace of Westminster has been home to the English and later British Parliament for hundreds of years. But the buildings we know now are mostly a Victorian creation. In the 18th century, MPs and peers were working in a hodgepodge of medieval buildings which were barely fit for purpose. In episode one of this series, we explored the medieval origins of the palace, whilst in episode three, we discovered how St Stephen's Chapel was adapted into a debating chamber for the House of Commons. In this episode, we're going to step back and examine how the rest of the palace complex developed between the English Reformation and 1834, culminating in an almighty duel as two celebrity architects competed for the chance to redevelop the palace. By the 18th century, the industrial and agricultural revolutions had prompted a big increase in parliamentary business. Projects like enclosing land or building canals, for example, all required their own Act of Parliament. MPs needed to discuss these bills, but there was a chronic shortage of committee rooms for them to meet in. Nor were there any proper library facilities to allow them to carry out research. The great buildings of the medieval palace, like Westminster Hall, the Lesser Hall and St Stephen's Chapel, survived, but a rabbit warren of smaller buildings had grown up around them, including several taverns and coffee shops. Not only did this look undignified, it also posed a serious fire hazard. Over the years, various schemes were put forward for a comprehensive rebuild of the creaking palace. Sir Christopher Wren put forward a scheme in the late 1690s, not long after he had remodelled the interior of the House of Commons. William Kent also put forward several schemes in the 1730s and 40s. However, the only major new building actually constructed at Westminster during this era was a modest office block built on the western side of Westminster Hall. It was known as the Stone Building, and it was cleverly designed so that it could be constructed in sections, meaning that penny-pinching MPs could spread the cost of construction. The central section was built in the 1750s, followed by the southern wing in the 1760s. But the project then ground to a halt, which left the whole building looking lopsided. In the 1790s, John Soane, a rising star of British architecture, arrived on the scene. Soane was the son of a bricklayer, but he had climbed the professional ladder and become one of the most respected architects in Britain. He now wanted to cement his reputation by constructing great civic buildings, and he had already won a prestigious appointment as architect to the Bank of England. But Soane's dream project was to rebuild the Palace of Westminster. He wanted to create a great classical-style Senate building, which would recreate the glory of the Roman Empire. In 1790, Soane got the job of Clerk of Works for the Palace of Westminster. Now, this was not actually a very prestigious job. It was mostly concerned with routine maintenance, but it helped Soane to lobby key politicians. In 1794, he persuaded the House of Lords to let him make some proposals to make their debating chamber, quote, more commodious, unquote. He produced a series of designs for handsome new buildings in his favourite neoclassical style. The Lords examined these politely 
but then, in 1795, they told Soane that the project would have to be postponed. You see, in 1793, France had declared war on Britain, and the Lords evidently felt that the cost of a new building couldn't be justified during wartime. Nevertheless, Soane still hoped that he might persuade the Lords to change their minds. He therefore continued to develop his proposals. In fact, he expanded his plans to embrace the entire palace complex rather than just the House of Lords. A few years later, it looked like Soane's persistence might finally pay off. As we saw in episode 3, the 1800 Act of Union between Great Britain and Ireland meant that Irish MPs and peers would now sit at Westminster. This meant an extra 100 MPs in the House of Commons, and 32 peers in the House of Lords. The existing buildings were simply too small to cope with these numbers. Soane hoped that this might finally be his moment, but he was thwarted by another celebrity architect, James Wyatt. Wyatt was the most fashionable and sought-after architect in Britain, and he was the personal favourite of King George III. Wyatt already had a string of prestigious buildings to his name, but he couldn't resist adding the Palace of Westminster to his list. Wyatt's plan for Westminster was radically different from Soane's. Soane was committed to the classical style of architecture, which imitated the buildings of ancient Greece and Rome. The Palace of Westminster was therefore something of a challenge for him, because the existing buildings on the site were mostly built in the Gothic style, which had developed in medieval Europe. Soane understood the historic importance of Westminster's medieval buildings, and he intended to keep the most important ones. But he wanted to screen them off behind enormous new classical colonnades, thus making the palace conform to his vision of a Roman-style senate. By contrast, Wyatt was much more enthusiastic about Gothic architecture. Rather than hide the palace's medieval buildings, he wanted to design new Gothic buildings to complement them. This was a radical idea. In the 18th century, the Middle Ages were viewed as a barbarous era. Classical architecture was considered to be a sign of good taste. But Wyatt's close relationship with the king meant that he was able to get royal approval for his plans. Ultimately, the king had the final say on who would rebuild Westminster, and the king chose Wyatt. Soane was furious, but there was nothing he could do about it. In episode 3, we saw how Wyatt managed to squeeze the extra MPs into the existing House of Commons but he decided that it wasn't possible to enlarge the old House of Lords. Fortunately, the old Lesser Hall was effectively redundant by this time, so Wyatt took it over and converted it into a new chamber for the House of Lords. He then turned his attention to other parts of the palace. During 1802-08, he rebuilt the Speaker's House, next to the House of Commons, I'll discuss this in more detail in a future episode. Then, during 1805-07, Wyatt built a new office block for the House of Lords in Old Palace Yard. Unfortunately, these new buildings received decidedly mixed reviews. The Speaker's House was praised for its lavish interiors, but Wyatt's office block was savaged by MPs. One politician said it looked like a cotton mill, another said it looked like a gentleman's lavatory. To make matters worse, Wyatt failed to manage the project effectively. His buildings were late, over budget and poorly constructed. Wyatt had grand plans to construct more new buildings at Westminster, but the Treasury eventually lost patience with him and the project ground to a halt. Wyatt died in a carriage accident in 1813, and his old rival, Soane, was asked to pick up where he had left off. Soane still wanted to construct classical buildings, but he now had the added challenge of making his work fit in with Wyatt's earlier contributions. Sometimes he was able to resolve the clash of styles by designing buildings which were 
Gothic on the outside, but classical on the inside. The best example of this was the Scala Regia, a grand staircase constructed in 1824 to provide a processional entrance for the king during the state opening of Parliament. Unfortunately, Soane had to demolish the old House of Lords to make way for this, and this provoked an outcry from some MPs. They argued that the old building was historically important, particularly because of its connection with Guy Fawkes, who had hidden his barrels of gunpowder in its cellar. Those MPs became even more angry when Soane was asked to construct a new building for the law courts alongside Westminster Hall. To do this, Soane proposed to finally complete the unfinished stone building. But even this wasn't going to provide enough space, so he proposed to construct an extension at its northern end, which would have sat right alongside the northern entrance to Westminster Hall. The stone building had been built in a classical style, and so Soane argued that his extension should be classical too. But he came up against a vocal group of MPs, who insisted that Soane's extension should be Gothic to match Westminster Hall. The MPs eventually got their way, and Soane's design had to be changed. Soane was livid at this interference, but he couldn't swim against the tide. Architectural fashion had clearly changed, and Soane's classical visions no longer suited the political mood. However, as it turned out, both Wyatt's and Soane's buildings at Westminster were ultimately doomed to a short life. On 16th of October 1834, a devastating fire ripped through the old palace. The two Houses of Parliament were destroyed and many other buildings were badly damaged. MPs now had no choice but to start work on a comprehensive rebuild of the palace. But that's another story.